short. Every place that Paul goes, Paul go, comes against people. Every church, he even goes into the church. His first place, remember we shared a few weeks ago, the first place he did whenever he got to a city was to go to the synagogue. He went to speak to his Jewish people, his, his Jewish brothers and sisters first, because he knew their responsibility was to take the gospel out, was to be the example of God before all the rest of the world, like the church is. We're to be the example to the rest of the world. Paul would go in, he would share things. And, and let me share, I want to share some of the things that he would share with the various churches. Paul um, went to the church of Philippi and shared some of the things, and some similar things he was sharing here in the book of Acts, which is kind of a, a, a story of all of his travels to the church. But in, in, in Philippians 3, verses 7 to 11, he said, I once thought these things were valuable, but now I consider them as worthless because of what Christ has done. Yes, everything else is worthless when it compares with the infinite value of knowing Christ Jesus, my Lord. For his sake, I have discarded everything else, counted it all as garbage, so that I can gain Christ and become as one with him. I no longer count it, uh, I no longer count my own righteousness to obey the law. Rather, I become righteous through faith in Christ. For God's way of making us right with himself depends on our faith. And I want you to know Christ and experience the mighty power that raised him from the dead. I want to suffer with him sharing his death so that one way or another I will experience the resurrection from the dead. He says this you know, I want to, he said, I want to become righteous through faith in Christ. You know, I wonder the depth of that in our hearts today. To become righteous because of our faith in Christ. And faith is not simply believing that there is a Christ. Faith is not simply just believing that, that he died on the cross. Faith is, goes further and says, I, mean, I believe everything he said. And because I believe it, I know that I better do it, and this is the direction I have to go in. Faith says, I want to change the way that I am. I'm going to put off all the things that I've been to follow Christ. As you get older, I remember one day I was uh, coming home. I was playing junior college football, and I came home one way, believe it or not, I know this is going to be a shock to all of you here, especially if you've known me for a while, that I actually had hair. Come on. Yeah, come on. That's right, though. Come on. Don't pull my leg, honey. Kind of. And I actually had a few muscles. So I come home, and, I, and in, in my strength and in my youth and all this, I sat at the table. There was a, a spread my stepmom had made for us and some of my brothers and sisters around the table and I was putting down my normal three helpings of food at the time. I remember a spaghetti and a salad on the time and it was really good. And my dad said something to me and I looked over at him and I patted him on his belly and I said, oh dad, we got to do something about that belly. And my dad looked at me and he said something. He said, I just keep looking. Just keep living. And that's resonated to me throughout my life in different reasons, at different times. There's one, I don't work out anymore, I don't have muscles, and I definitely don't have hair. It all goes away at some point. And the things that I count as value, valuable to me, the status I have achieved, and now that it's gone, and through all those things, and for me, different from Paul, because Paul still had all those things when he came to a relationship with Christ. He was still a Pharisee. He was thought after. Gamaliel said that he was, that the thing about Paul is that he could never give Paul enough books. So Paul was one of the top students with Gamaliel when he went to study with him. Paul had more driven desire to make sure that the ways of the law were followed so much that he was the leader in killing Christians. Whatever Paul did, he did to the max. 
He had his Roman citizenship. That was a great thing to have back then because you had certain freedoms. So it was a Jew with Roman citizenship. He could speak all these languages. Everyone knew who he was. He had a status. And Paul said, all that's garbage. I want to know Christ. And I'm going to have a greater faith in Christ and the power that comes along with the true faith in Christ. Because if you have that power, it will change everything. And you put everything aside. That's what he told the, that church in the church of Philippi. To the church of Galatians, he said this. I love this passage. He said, dear brothers and sisters, if I were still preaching that you must be circumcised, as you say I do, why am I still being persecuted? If I were no longer preaching salvation through the cross, no one would be offended. He talks to this church, and he says to this church, See, if I preach a false gospel, something that you want to see, that if I preach that circumcision was important, he says, I wouldn't be, I wouldn't be persecuted by it. See, Paul's beginning to talk about persecution. I'm here to tell you that, like Paul, as a believer, persecution is going to happen. You know, my desire would be right now to build up a, a, a group, a church that would go out and say, you know what, I have enough faith that I'm going to stand for Christ and I'm getting ready, getting prepared, getting my armor shined up because persecution is going to happen. See, I can remember, and I'm, the reason why I'm the way I am right now is that I, I failed at some of these things. I was telling a, a group, I'm starting a, a fellowship of Christian athletes at the, at the school where we're at. Right now, and I was telling a group of, of, I was talking to our football team, our varsity football team the other day, and I said, you know, I'm starting this, and part of it's out of conviction. I said I was in fellowship with Christian athletes when I was playing at Rice University in Houston, and I said I was a different person off the field than I was on the field. Off the field at fellowship Christian athletes meetings, we were in the scriptures, we were learning the scriptures. I was praying with brothers, yes and amen. But on the field, to prove to the other people that I was tough, I was dropping F-bombs. Saying it over people was at times and taunting. Why? Because they were doing it to me. But that's not what a believer does. A believer stands for what he believes. He says, I'm not going to change. I'm going to be in Christ. And I'm going to meet you based on the ability that God has given me. These are the things that Paul is saying. He goes, I'm going to stand for truth no matter what because this is what God has told me to do. In 1 Peter, Peter said this. Yes, you, in 1 Peter 2, 7 and 8, said yes, you who trust him, recognize the honor God has given him, but for those who reject him, the stone that the, the builder has rejected has now become the cornerstone. And he is a stone that makes people stumble and the rocks that makes them fall. Here's the truth. Peter said this too. Just like Paul, he stands alongside of him. He's saying, you know what? That's going to be persecution because when you share the word of God, and this might be something that may be going on in some of your hearts right now, I'm just being frank. And some of the things I'm going to share in a moment that go on with what Paul says. There's a battle that the scripture says. The Bible says that the spirit is willing, but the flesh is weak. There are things that you're going to say, don't tell me what to do. I want to do it my own way. There's a, a, a saying right now in the church today that there's a, a progressiveness. You know, pro they call it progressive Christianity. And that is that God kind of follows us. And that's contrary to Scripture because the Bible says, Jesus, God said, I'm the Lord and I, I change not. But that, what, that progressive Christianity says, you know, God adheres to our way. He's okay with the things that we do and the things that we say and our own beliefs. But to share the word of God is going to cause people to stumble. They're not going to like it. Paul shares this in 2 Timothy 3.12. Yes, and everyone who 